Emotional intelligence is a compelling model with a lot of face validity. That is, people see it as covering what it purports to measure. However, in the academic world, there is a lot of criticism of emotional intelligence. In this video, we're going to look at the major points of the cases for and against emotional intelligence. The case for emotional intelligence. The psychologist Carrie Chernis compiled an excellent document, The Business Case for Emotional Intelligence, in 1999, and I'll link to it below. Some of the things that I'll be saying for emotional intelligence are taken from that document. Chernis offers us plenty of evidence that workplace performance correlates with levels of emotional intelligence. However, we must always be mindful that correlation is not the same as causation. Because the two are correlated with one another does not necessarily mean that one causes the other. However, it's also true that some of the case studies that Chernis cites do appear to show causation. That is, there doesn't seem to be the same level of improvement in a control group that is not trained in emotional intelligence as there is in a group that is trained in emotional intelligence. It does seem that there is some evidence that emotional intelligence leads to improvements in workplace performance. However, we do need to consider something like the classic Hawthorne experiment. In the Hawthorne experiment, workers were offered higher light levels and as a result, their work improved. However, it later became clear that it wasn't the light level itself that was causing the improvement in the level of work. It was actually the fact that the workers were glad to be consulted and it raised morale. What I suspect we've got in many of the experiments that Chernis cites is strong correlation rather than direct causation. What I think is beyond doubt is that the power of emotional intelligence correlates well with our intuition. And of course, our intuition comes largely from personal experience. Emotional intelligence is also an easy model to understand and use. It makes good sense because we can see how if I understand myself better, I can perform better. And if I understand you better, I can motivate you and inspire you better. There's also growing evidence that the things that we measure as emotional intelligence can be linked to neurological factors, actual things happening in our brain, and to genetic factors. This suggests that emotional intelligence is something real in human beings. However, let's look at the case against emotional intelligence. The first argument against emotional intelligence is simple. Researchers cannot determine and agree among themselves what the true set of factors that make up emotional intelligence is. Indeed, if we look on the one hand at measurable abilities and on the other at subjective perceptions, we come up with two different clusters of factors that make up emotional intelligence. Different ways of understanding the phenomenon of emotional intelligence give us different results and therefore in some way seem to undermine the validity of the idea itself. On the other hand, this is social science and the fact that we've got a complexity of different ways of understanding the phenomenon may just mean that we don't fully understand it yet. We haven't really got to the root of what emotional intelligence is. It may be that whatever lies inside our brains and our genetics expresses in a multitude of complex and interconnected ways. All this means we have to be at least sceptical about the rigour and robustness of the tools that we use to measure emotional intelligence. That is to say, even if there is some validity to emotional intelligence, our ability to assess it is compromised. The next point is that there seems to be quite a strong correlation 
between emotional intelligence and some aspect of personality. This raises an interesting question of whether emotional intelligence is truly independent of personality. That said, since we know that we have a reasonable understanding of measuring personality and a fairly high confidence in our personality measurement tools, this might support emotional intelligence as being somehow related to something that we can measure very well. But the counterpoint is that if emotional intelligence does correlate strongly with aspects of personality, then it might not be a thing in itself. It may just be an expression of our personality and therefore not as useful a concept. Finally, there's a range of criticisms of emotional intelligence that say that whilst it might well be a useful concept, it certainly isn't an intelligence. But if it's not an intelligence, what is it? Different authors come up with different answers to that question. They may see it as a behaviour or a set of behaviours, or as a skill, or a skill set. Maybe it's a kind of knowledge, or perhaps, least useful of all, it's a set of social norms that we find ourselves pressured to comply with. My verdict on the case of emotional intelligence. I'm no judge. I'm not a psychologist, and I'm certainly not an expert in the area. But to me, as a hard physical scientist with years of experience in management, the answer seems clear. The evidence for emotional intelligence as a clear an objectively measurable form of intelligence is weak. The evidence for its positive impact in the workplace is compelling, but circumstantial. The risks involved in training people and encouraging them to use emotional intelligence is extremely low, with no evidence of any risk at all. I think the best assessment of emotional intelligence is rather like Howard Gardner's assessment of his multiple intelligence theory. He describes the multiple intelligences as fictions, but as useful fictions. Emotional intelligence, to me, is a model. It's a model that explains why some people are more effective in the workplace, and it's a model for predicting how you can be more effective in the workplace and is a model for developing a number of capabilities and competencies that will make you more effective in the workplace. Can I prove this? No. Do I believe it? Yes. Do I recommend that you take steps to improve your emotional intelligence skills? Absolutely. Please do like this video if you've enjoyed it and learned from it. I'll be creating loads more great management courses videos for you, so please do subscribe to the channel and hit the bell so you don't miss any of them. I'll look forward to seeing you in the next one, and in the meantime, keep learning.